Rural Folk. What is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? Part 3. Please make sure you share and subscribe. Our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. This is a horribly violent incident read at your own risk. Not seen or experienced, I was at my village six or something months back. I don't live there, so I don't know anybody other than a couple of houses next to mine. One afternoon, we were supposed to clean the rice for a relative's wedding, and we had to supply the food to be cooked ourselves, and I was helping too. I understand the local dialect, though I can't speak it well enough. There were aunts, grandmas, sisters, and all the women available. They started gossiping about an incident happening in the house next to theirs. The incident was, a young girl, about 20, was so brutally beaten up by her own brother in front of a crowd of folks, not by hand, not by stick, but with a giant bed frame and something metal. Then he had pinned her to the ground in a chokehold until she was unconscious. Her mother was there, there were men, there were adults, nobody did anything. She was later admitted to the hospital with broken ribs and a couple of severe injuries, all because she answered her brother rudely. Not exactly rude, but kind of back-answered or said no to something he had demanded. I'm not sure. People didn't do anything, just watched the whole show and excused the monster by saying he was probably possessed, or he is not like that. I heard about this incident two days after it happened. When I talked to my grandma about it or asked her to file a complaint, she said, That is not our matter. We don't poke our noses in someone else's houses, no matter how criminally offensive it is. That was the most shocking thing I have ever heard. Account 2. My little brother and I were tossing a baseball around near dusk at the bottom of our property, 30 wooded mountain acres way in the middle of nowhere. It had gotten dark enough that we were just about to call it quits when we heard the single most horrifying scream we've ever heard, before or since, from the trees just beyond the edge of the clearing. Imagine a woman screaming in mortal agony, writhing in the most wretched torment imaginable. Every tortured scream from horror movies, war movies, anything you've ever heard, nothing compared to this. Even now, decades removed from hearing it, the hair on my arms and neck stands up just thinking of it. And it's made even worse by the realization of what it actually was. A mountain lion. Full-grown female mountain lions scream loudly when they're in heat, and it sounds like a human woman being torn to pieces by the devil himself. To hear that, two kids alone in the dark in the middle of nowhere was about as terrifying as it gets. Account 3. In total honesty, the creepiest thing I have seen is the droves of people from cities move here and completely disrespect nature. The selfishness of people who have disconnected from nature no longer belong. The littering, the legislation, the feeling like they are able to possess it, it's weird, and it's creepy. The next time you see a book telling you where you can find the best hot springs or the best trails that are off the beaten path, remember somebody is profiting off of something that they're sending people to in droves, and when you do that, it destroys it. The over-recreation of the rivers because people want to be a part of something is actually negatively impacting the fish, the health of the riverbeds, and invasive species. It's really weird how somebody will be so focused on seeking their own joy that they're willing to destroy because rules can't possibly apply to them. Account 4. When I had just gotten my first car, I was driving home one night around 10 p.m. I came around a corner on a very dark back road, and my headlights shone onto a large stake that someone had set up on the curve with a deer's head shoved on top. I was nervous the rest of the way home after that. Account 5. I was walking home from my friend one evening. The path took me downhill through a forest. It was quite late, so it was really dark, but there was just enough moonlight shining through the trees that it was possible to walk on the path without a flashlight. Just as I was in about the middle of my path, I started hearing twigs snapping and dried leaves cracking under footsteps on my immediate right. I froze and looked to see if I could see anyone. Nobody was there. Then the grumbling became audible, like a big creature grumbling just to my right. It was loud and right next to me. I said a frightened hello, but the grumbling and cracking and snapping continued. I was scared shitless. I've never heard anything like that before. And to make things worse, there were warnings of brown bears in the nearby woods. I was trembling. 
I somehow pulled my phone out, turned on the flashlight, and shone it out in front of me. What I saw was nothing, but the grumbling continued. So I shone the flashlight down to the ground. That's when I saw it, a goddamn hedgehog. He was about a meter from me, burrowing for worms or God knows what. But the sounds it was making, it made it sound like it was a creature 100 times bigger. I wanted to punt that little fucker down into the valley. So yeah, that's the one time I almost shat my pants due to fear in the forest. Account 6. We had a big black feral cat hanging around our farm for a year or so. We'd see him far away, but he'd always run off. One day, he strolled right up to my wife, started rubbing on her leg and purring, drooling all over himself. He got pretty friendly for a week or so. One night, I heard an awful noise outside. It sounded like a pack of wolves howling. We have coyotes around here now, Western PA, but hadn't seen or heard them before this. I looked out the window, and the cat was just staring straight at me. He sat and stared for a minute, then ran away. We never saw him again. Scary, then cute story. A few years ago, I was out in my workshop and came into the house around midnight. I heard a weird screaming sound as I walked towards the house and thought it was a bird. We have some strange birds, including screech owls. They're only like eight inches tall, but make a loud scream like someone is being murdered. I went in the house and my wife asked, Did you hear that noise? It sounds like an animal in trouble or something. Okay, I got the flashlight and walked down the hill from the house, following this sound. It's getting more ragged and scary. It's pitch black, other than the feeble beam of my flashlight. It's getting louder. I got through the trees into the clearing that connects our fields, and the noise is coming out of the ground. I shone my dying flashlight down, and there's a sinkhole next to our disconnected septic tank where storm runoff has eroded the soil. Four feet deep in the hole is the tiniest newborn white-tailed deer fawn I've ever seen. She couldn't be more than a few hours old and is the size of a beagle. She is covered in mud and is bleeding her little head off. I reached in and scooped her out with one hand. Her eyes were packed with mud. She struggled weakly, then gave up. I carried her back to the house and carefully washed the mud off, gently rinsing her face until she could see again. I wrapped her in a towel and put her in a box on the porch so she could warm up and dry off. Around 4 a.m., I carried the box back down to the hole, sat it down, then put a huge rock over the hole. At 7, I went back down and she was gone. Later that evening, I was mowing the grass. Way down at the bottom of the field, a big doe emerged from the brush, followed by the tiny fawn. Mom had come back for her. I saw them on occasion all that summer. We have a lot of deer, so it's possible she's one of the adults now. I'm glad my wife didn't think it was a bird. Account 7. I live on a road very far away from town. I have neighbors, but I can't hear them or see them from my house. My back deck overlooks a field before miles of woods. One night I'm out back having a smoke and most likely stoned. I'm just chilling in the dark with a little bit of candlelight and the light from inside when I hear a sound that scared the hell out of me. It was a deep, low-breathing, snorting sound. It came from the field, but it sounded like it was right next to me. It gave me chills, and I thought there was a monster in my backyard. It's pitch black, and I can't see what it is. Not that I really wanted to. I went back inside, locked the door, and googled the shit out of it. It was a deer. During their mating season, a male deer can make sounds like that. Account 8. Born and bred in the city, I have been living here my entire life. Just before COVID started, I thought it would be a fun idea to rent a cabin in the woods to completely disconnect from life and work. So I found a cabin with a beautiful deck, which was only accessible through a couple of back roads. I drove 45 minutes to an hour through the woods without seeing anyone. Anyway, the first evening goes great. I cook myself a nice dinner, have a couple of drinks, etc. It's snowing heavily, so I pour myself another glass, wrap myself in two thick blankets, and go outside on the deck to smoke a nice stogie. Let me tell you something. As someone who's used to city noise, the silence of the deep woods is terrifying. I couldn't see much except for trees, but it was as if the primal part of my brain switched on and ran on overdrive. I'm not superstitious at all, but I felt like every cell in my body was screaming, you're being watched. You might not be alone here. Go back inside where you're safe. Of course, nothing happened. And after the first week, I enjoyed the quietness. But still, you hear so many new sounds. You totally get why our ancestors believed in demons, banshees, wendigos. Account 9. I was raised hunting, 
so walking in the pitch black woods to my stand in the morning was pretty comfortable after a while. I knew the property well since I'd been in those woods since I was four and my dad would take me along. Given that, I didn't even use a headlamp on my walks back. Well, one morning I'm walking back and suddenly there is this stomach curdling scream 10 yards away from me. It's pitch black, so I can't see what it is, but it sounds like what you'd expect a baby screaming while being murdered to sound like. Promptly got to my stand and pulled out the Google machine. Ever hear a red fox scream? If not, check it out. Count 10. Not rural in the burbs. But my parents' house is landlocked, which means it does not have direct access to the road. You have to go through someone else's property to access theirs. Currently, this is a parking lot that belongs to a park. My parents have kept their property natural, meaning they despise yard work, so they basically have a house in the middle of the woods next to a park. I was coming home one night a few years ago. It was dark between 10 and 11 p.m. I come around the corner to come up the driveway and immediately slam on the brakes. There was this tall thing coming out of the darkness right next to the driveway. It was moving. It was taller than my car and super skinny. I fucking thought Slender Man was coming for me. As I sat there in shock, my eyes adjusted. It was a blue heron, a big giant bird. It had come up from the creek at the park looking for food, I guess. Scared the hell out of me. Account 11. I saw a cougar in person once and it was terrifying, probably less than 10 feet away. If you've never seen a cougar before, you're imagining it too small. They're just shy of eight feet long on average and their whole body is muscle. Not muscle like a bull, mind you, but like a tightly coiled wire biggest, meanest-looking animal I'd ever seen in the wild, and it was completely silent as it went past us. We just stood still for a good couple of minutes after it got out of sight. Account 12. I have always heard the saying, if you see a cougar, it has already decided not to attack you. I have lived in the Alaska backcountry and spent a lot of time around different species of bear. You learn pretty quickly that bears, for the most part, want nothing to do with you. Their behavior is pretty easy to learn, and you have an idea of what to expect with them in various scenarios. You can pretty easily see and hear them moving in most situations. Big cats still give me the fear, though. They are just too unpredictable and sneaky. Account 13. I live in the countryside. Recently, there are always dead dogs on my land. I am not sure if this is a coincidence or something else, but someone is killing healthy dogs and dumping the bodies just like that. It's not a great sight. The smell is really bad. The dogs look bloated and it looks like their eyes came out of the socket. Account 14. So I live in the city, but I'd call myself quite an accomplished outdoorsman when I can get away from city life. A few years ago, I loaded a bunch of camping gear onto my bicycle and spent the better part of the next seven months riding 5,300 miles, 8,500 kilometers around the U.S. At night, I most often preferred to wild camp, simply finding somewhere to disappear into the woods, somewhere people were unlikely to find me and even less likely to care that I was there. It ended up being one of my favorite parts of the whole trip, just finding some secluded spot in the woods to get some much needed rest. But the forest, I quickly learned, is not a quiet place at night. There's always some form of noise. The chirping of thousands of crickets becomes a constant drone throughout the night, accompanied by many toads. There would always be at least a slight breeze through the trees or the babbling of a nearby creek. It was always a highlight of my nights, though not particularly uncommon to hear the distant yips and howls of coyotes, and I fondly look back on the one night when two owls, one on either end of my tent, called back and forth through much of the night. After a month or so of this, I became quite accustomed to the nighttime sounds of the forest and it became very comforting. So it was quite a shock to my system when one night in rural Montana, I realized I was struggling to sleep because of the exact opposite of what keeps most people up. That night it wasn't the noise that was keeping me awake, but rather the complete lack of any noise. It was dead silent, and that was an incredibly unnerving experience. I can only describe it as the loudest silence I've ever heard. It almost felt as if the entire forest was hiding from an equally silent predator. Suddenly, the occasional snapping of a twig, a common sound that would normally get lost in the cacophony of the forest, sounded like a gunshot. I slept terribly that night, and morning could not come soon enough. Account 15. 
I had just turned 16 and was driving home in the middle of nowhere at night on a back road that had trees on both sides. At one part in the road, the tree line on the left side briefly clears. When I got to that part of the road, I saw five large, almost perfect circles of fiery, yellowish-orange light high in the sky just hovering. Two were close to each other, more to the left, and the other three were aligned more to the right, but all were relatively close. No movement from them, no sound, nothing. Again, these were large glowing circles. They looked nothing like the dot of light you'd see from an aircraft or anything. After about 15 seconds of driving, the tree line got dense again, so the sky was once again blocked from my view. I was about 30 seconds from the end of the road, and as I reached the end and the trees cleared again, I had about another 10 seconds worth of viewing the mysterious lights before they got slightly brighter and then disappeared pretty much instantly and simultaneously. To this day, I still have no idea what I saw. Again, this was in the middle of nowhere, hours from any major city. No known military facilities or government entities or anything like that nearby. I've rattled my brain on every logical theory possible. Fireworks, missile tests, meteors, military aircraft, etc. None of them make sense. The whole experience was so eerie and the fact that it's still unexplained weirds me out to this day.